Okay. So what about this question? What, what surprised you about college? Good question. Um, the levels of hospitality that you could get from a college, like the levels here are almost overwhelming. Everyone is so friendly. <laughs> yeah. Everyone is so welcoming. They're, um, have strong convictions. That's the whole point that um, the professors keep telling us what Masters is here to do is to help you build strong convictions for yourself. Mm -hmm. to build your, make it your own and not just what the professors keep telling you. They encourage you. Every Bible class, they encourage you to read, the, read what I said in the Bible for yourself. Go back to my lesson plans. Go back to my Bible chapters that I use for today and read it for yourself so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, the consistent feeding of the word that I get um, in some shape or form that goes around almost every day, you'll find a small group of some kind. Some group of students will always gather together in front of their dorms, in lobbies, at coffee shops all the time. You just see somebody there with a Bible and about like five other people. Mm. They come together and they worship, they sing songs, they read the word together and they talk about it. And so it's mm. so refreshing to see people wanting to feed themselves more of God and more of the word. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what surprised me. I thought there'd be a lot more theological debates because this is, this is a Christian college. And there is that assumption about that, but I'm so glad that at the beginning, they broke all that down for me. Um, and the attitude of the professor surprised me too. I've never gotten this from, though I love my teachers so much, getting it from a professor at a university level him telling you how can i better serve you because i'm here for you wow. that's amazing in of itself yeah that's amazing in of itself he's more focused on preparing the next generation for christ than your next exam but at the same time there is still a push to be the best that you can be because they've made so much effort to give you all the tools that you need to succeed so there's that lovely balance of that and i never expected that but well, that's really cool. Um, you know, I think you just described uh, Christ likeness. And I think, you know, the more that the folks who are up here can, you know, put themselves under underneath, right, and lower themselves to serve and to um, love the people that they are serving. You know, that's that's such a cool thing. Um, may may every Christian learn from that and, yes. and experience what that's like. Um, okay, so um, put yourself... I mean, it's been it's been almost it was exactly a year uh, a year ago, uh, Monday, that mm -hmm. we we closed the school down, um, yeah. and you know, wow, a, a whole year has gone by, and and somehow the Lord has uh, helped us to find a way, you know, to keep our school open and uh, to do chapels like this. Uh, but a uh, uh, but a year and a week ago, we were in chapel. And we had, um, I, you know, we started to reduce the numbers and things like that. We were, you know, worried about things and, but whatnot. But, uh, but put yourself back in, in the stadium, in the Sostrom uh, facility there, uh, the gym, and, and at, pretend that I'm interviewing you right now. And we're standing out there and you had just a few moments to talk to the kids and just to share your heart with them. Like, what, what would you say to them? What would be on your heart to say to the Berean students? Absolutely. Um, three main points. The first two are for the overall senior class. Um, the last one is for mainly like the music, my music peeps. And for those who um, even want to go down my specific track of audio production. So the first one, I love this. Place God in the center, in front, behind, on the sides, and surrounding everything you do. Hmm. Consult him in your list of colleges. You have to consult him because there's no better person hmm. who can judge character than God. Yeah. There's no person. His wisdom is centered on truth and spoken with love. And how, what better voice would you want consulting you than a voice like that? <laughs> so remember your worship. Remember to worship God in all things that you do. Remember to get the, give God the credit in all the things that you do. By giving God the credit, you understand that as a Christian, you understand who is Lord over your life. Mm. More than yourself. Um, the God of the universe is the one who makes streams in the desert. He's the one who makes crooked paths straight. And he wants to withhold no good thing from you. Mm. He's the best person that you can go to for things like this. 
keep him at the forefront and you keep staying on the path that he wants you to. It's not always going to be easy. There's going to be bumps along the way. I can guarantee you that. But every time you go through a roller coaster like that, it's meant to strengthen, mold, and shape your character and the person that God needs you to be. Mm. So remember that. That's regardless of any discipline, any um, major that you go for, or any other college. Some people are called to secular universities. I didn't feel in my heart that I would be able to do something like that because that's like for me and how where my heart was in relationship with God. A lot of um, times people ask me to go to, what about an HBCU, which is a historical black college? And I responded in kind to the wonderful person who told me that. I said, I would get culture shock <laughs> going to an HBCU mm. because I have been so open to the people of the church, gathering with the saints, being around people who are like God. Going to a place like that would be almost culture shock for me mm. just because of how exposure I've gotten from other men and women of Christ Hmm. so there's that the second thing it's a broken record because it's true and that is to never be afraid to make mistakes there is going to be mistakes guaranteed mistakes build experience Hmm. that's why you need to go through them you're not going to get much experience if you don't have a bit of backtrack honestly if some things come easy for you there's not as much weight when you come out of it. There's not much like it's more embedded in my system. It's more second nature. If there was struggle, you going through it. That's a lot of times why when you go and you accept and you're obedient to God's path, a lot of times there's struggle. Hmm. So when you come out of it, you remember exactly who brought you through it, why he brought you through it. And in comparison to where you are now to where you were when you first got in that you look nothing like from what you've been through because of the struggles that you went through. So there is an actual good design to mistakes. Mm. So don't be afraid of them. Um, they mold and they shape your character. They add more layers to yourself. So you're not just the most uh, vulnerable part of yourself. There's more layers to you. You can build experience. Like I mentioned before, you build skills. Um, you build more discernment, you have more wisdom, you have knowledge, you can better judge the world around you under a new set of eyes because you've gone through a bit of struggle. So you understand a bit more. Um, so treat them as learning moments. They're meant to help you learn. So treat them as learning moments. Um, for the third and final one for me, my music people, um, this is something that was profound to me because my dad said it to me actually when I was back as a senior and it changed the way I listened and basically try to recreate music itself. And that is, you need to understand what exactly music is. Hmm. Music is an invention of heaven designed to glorify God. The voice itself is an invention of God and it's hmm. the main tool he used in creation. If you think about how profound that is, that completely changes the way how you view your own voice and why it has so much power that death and life lie in the power of your own tongue. Mm. There's a reason it comes full circle of you being made in the image and likeness of God. Um, And that's why music itself has so much power. Its original design was to glorify God. And you also got to remember the original job that the devil had before he became the devil. He's basically the worship leader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The man was basically the worship leader. He was in charge of leading people in the worship, and he knew exactly what a beautiful sound, what the power of music, he understood it completely. <laughs> he understands, and that's why in the music industry, in music today, why it's so profane and so short-sighted, the lyrics are all messed up. People change their lives, they change their minds, their spirits get real twisted because of the music they listen to, because it has power. Music is designed and equipped with such power because of where it comes from and what it is. So with that, what does that mean to me as a human being, as someone who is made in the image and likeness of God, as Mm -hmm. a Christian? What does that mean to me? I'll use myself as an example. My job in audio production, basically, I am an amplifier. What I do is I can amplify the voices of singers 
bring them to a larger audience of people who've never heard. Remember back in the day when they were amphitheaters, if you didn't come to the concert, you didn't come to the lecture, you basically missed it. Now with the technology that we have, I can bring it back to you. Mm-hmm. I can let more people view it um, around the globe. Nearly the entire world can be reached because of the technology today. And music, the popular music around the world, there's, there's a billboard of the top music that's popular around the world. And people around the world are listening to the same music. Mm. Like if you think how crazy that is, that's amazing. If you make a song and it's super popular and it's at the top billboard, someone in a third world country could be listening to it. So if you have the power to reach someone across the globe with your message, don't you think you'd want to make a, a message glorifying the God for that? With the kind of openness that we have, especially in the world of music, what I've been exposed to, what I have the ability to do, it changes the way how I approach my work. It really does. The amount of service that I go through, the amount of things that I do, how important it is, especially to the overall process of making music and sending it out for people to listen to. Mm-hmm. What message am I getting? What sticks with them more than just how nice it sounds? What am I saying to people? (laughs) And so, especially in terms of church, which is what I love. Some people are kind of stuck in conservative ways in the church where they don't like, eh, technology isn't going to help the church. It's not going to do much for us. People need to be here in the church. I'm like, yes, that's true. But what is happening in the world is keeping us from doing a lot of what we were doing in the past. It's one thing COVID has made us do is completely (laughs) rethink our situation. Yeah. Big reset on what's happening in our lives. And so pastors now have the ability or some are forced to get their message out on technology, on stream, Zoom, YouTube and things like that. But with this, they can reach so many more people. Mm-hmm. It's insane mm-hmm. how many people are on these types of medias and that listen to all this kind of stuff. It's just insane. So yeah. thinking about the sim- this simple thing that technology, the thing that I do, can reach people on the other side of the globe, if, you know, if <laughs> I do it correctly. Yeah. It changes the way how I approach my work, and it constantly makes me think about what message am I trying to portray what am I saying? How do I present myself that's glorifying to God? Mm. Yeah. Man. So I guess- wow. Um, well, I want to say a couple of things to you. First of all, I think I speak for everybody who's watching to say that um, what you just said was a, a blessing um, and an encouragement. I know it was to me. Um, and I feel enlightened about music. And, uh, you know, I'm usually a... a AM talk radio person, but uh, I'm going to go back to K-Love. <laughs> I'm going to put that back on. Um, that was so good. Um, second of all, you should write a book with that in it. That was awesome. Deb, you need to get that out. And then thirdly, I think I would say that I the, the Lord is going to use you in some unbelievable ways, and he already is, and now you're just you're just getting some more tools and, and one day you're going to find out what, what he was up to with all that. Where, wherever he's going to put you, it's going to be awesome. So what a blessing um, you are. And we miss you. We love you. We're, we're so uh, thankful for you. And folks, pray for her, Alexis Brooks. God is going to do m- massive, massive things in her life uh, for his kingdom. Yeah. Okay. Well, amen to that. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Always happy to get back to Brian always. I miss y'all so much, really, truly. May God be with every single one of you. May guide and place paths in front of you that are straight, honestly. Continue to trust God. Continue to do whatever you can to get as close to God as you possibly can. Mm. It has brought everyone's attention in. It's like, I'm getting your attention. Yeah. Come back to me. Yeah. And then I was thinking, too, what you said about um, technology and um, the ability to disperse it. I mean, think of world evangelism and what technology has done as well. So um, amen to that. And that's that's how God's going to use you for his kingdom exponentially with technology. So cool. Well, awesome. 
Thanks again.